And today we're talking about the sexual instinct. There are three main instincts slash drives and you can find a video about that. Just watch this video. Okay, so in the animal kingdom, the sexual instinct can be found in the way how animals mate, pair up and attract each other. And this is not too different from how we do it. The sexual instinct is basically about, yes, also procreation. It is about producing something. So, as I said, it is about mating, attraction, pair, bonding. And some sources say that bonding is more of a social instinct thing. However, the sexual instinct is actually more concerned about close bonds or intensity. The thing is, a lot of people have an issue with calling it the sexual instinct because yes, sex is not just about the sexual instinct, it can also cover self-preservation needs. It can just be a physical need. However, you cannot really divorce the sexual instinct from sex. It makes no sense. But there has to be a disclaimer. Not all people who have a lot of sex are actually the sexual instinct first or even second. Men tend to have a stronger connection to this instinct despite their preferences, their order. So someone who has this instinct as the last one that they care about, they don't care much about relationships with people romantically. They don't care much about passion or hobbies that much. They mostly care about social interactions or self-preservation matters and finances and physicalities and stuff like that. Those people, when they are men, they're still gonna have a stronger connection to this instinct than if they were women. And the reason is testosterone. The testosterone hormone makes men more sexually driven. They have a high sex drive. That's also why a lot of men mistype themselves as this instinct first, just because they have a high sex drive. Having a high sex drive has not much to do with actually valuing this instinct. You can have a high sex drive, and have this instinct last. If it's your first instinct, you're going to be obsessed with appearing attractive to people you are attracted to. You want to appear as attractive, you want to have passion in your life. That's a better sign that, is, that this is actually your first instinct. If you're more preoccupied with social or self-preservation matters, for that please watch the right videos, you're not that instinct first. No matter how high your sex drive is. Okay, so how do you know? What make someone this instinct first. You're going to be preoccupied with the idea of attraction. How attractive am I? How attractive are other people? It is very important for people who have this instinct first that they are considered attractive by others. And there's also a certain social value when you're being attractive to others. So people who are social instinct first but actually sexual instinct last might also try to be considered attractive in the eyes of other people because it can give them social value. But for someone who is the sexual instinct first, being attractive is basically about finding a good mate, a good partner. Also it is about getting attention. The sexual instinct actually has the desire to stand out because if you stand out from the crowd, your partner might see you more likely. It is more likely that they are going to be attracted to you. So people who have the SX instinct first, they are often, as I said, concerned with being seen as sexually attractive, a sexually attractive partner. And oftentimes it is physical stuff, you know, being sexually attractive on a physical level, but it can also be things like intellect, anything that is going to be considered attractive to the kinds of people you want to attract. So attraction is a big issue and if you have issues with attracting the kind of person you want, if that is your first instinct, that is going to be very jarring for you and very difficult to deal with. Also, if you have issues in your relationships, in your intimate romantic relationships, they can be casual but it's even worse if they are, you know, more serious or long term, if you have issues with making those relationships work, this is also going to be very difficult for you. This is also going to be very depressing for you. The worst thing that can happen to the sexual instinct if it's first, and also to some extent second, is if you're getting 
rejected by your romantic partner or if you're getting broken up with or if you're going through an abusive relationship things like that are going to be very jarring for you also another thing that many people may not think about is if you have no passions a lot in life if you have nothing you're really passionate about and you kind of bring it forward this is also very uncomfortable and very disillusioning for the first instinct if it's sexual if you have an unhealthy sexual instinct which can apply to all combinations first second or third but it's especially common for third and first actually is when you are addicted to sex very sexually promiscuous even reckless if you're prudish you know those are like the opposites the extremes if you have a string of broken relationships if you sh if you choose people who are abusive to you who are bad partners for you in that sense if as i said you have no passions in life it is like the entire juice has been drained out of you you are out, you are without life without passion then that's also a sign that you have an unhealthy sexual instinct if you have an unhealthy attachment style if you are very avoidant or you're very preoccupied or you're very anxious in your romantic relationships that is also a sign that you have an unhealthy sexual instinct or on the other hand signs that you have a healthy sexual instinct is if you have a healthy attachment style if you know how to make relationships work if you have passions if you're passionate about your life if you have found a way to reproduce in some sense this is the thing with the sexual instinct obviously the most common sense expression of it is to have children but you don't need to have children to fulfill the sexual instinct it can also be a matter of creating something that's deeply personal to you and that has value and can outlast you as i said children are the most obvious example but because we humans are a bit more sophisticated than that it can also extend to other things and that can probably explain why so many artists and creative people are sexual instinct first or second the creative spirit the creative spark this desire to create something that reproduces itself out of you that is a creation is sexual what can you do when your sexual instinct is unhealthy if you're in a relationship or even if you're single you need to figure out how to make the relationship work or to have a partner that is positive for you. You need to figure out how you can have a healthy attachment style. Very short overview of that. You basically have to act as if you were secure. Instead of running away when you feel like it or instead of pushing the other person away or instead of clinging onto the other person, you have to be in the middle which usually means staying calm collected and just seeing what happens and usually the anxiety subsides and you realize okay I didn't have to push them away I didn't have to pull them towards me I could just be a normal person have a normal conversation with them you know other than that actually socionics has a framework for which personality types are more compatible with other ones if you are an IF type, you probably don't even need that template. You will have an almost intuitive sense, so to speak, of what kinds of personalities match well with yours. But a lot of logical types, especially ET people, have a very bad sense of that kind of stuff. So it can, so it can be useful for them to study socionics, but it can also create more problems. <laughs> so you got to pick and choose a little bit with that. Other ways, if you are single and not currently dating or you're going through a breakup, the best things you can do are focusing on your passions, focusing on finding your passion. What really makes your heart pound faster? The problem is a lot of unhealthy sexual instinct first people resort to drugs. <laughs> Drug addiction, you know, when it's the kind that is heightening your sensations or creating hallucinations and if you are addicted to that that's also another healthy sign so i'm not telling you please don't do drugs 
if that's the only thing that makes you happier in life, you really need to reevaluate your priorities. You need to find something else that can also give you satisfaction and happiness on another level. But yeah, so what have, helps with the sexual instinct, as I said, finding your passion, finding a hobby, finding something that really invigorates you is going to be really important. And if you haven't found it yet, you have to keep looking. That's very important. It's also good that you do something that you're passionate about, that you are transmitting something to other people, that you're creating something. Creating something is important for this instinct. They need to be in the process of creation. And yes, even if you're single, you can learn about attachment style theories. You can learn how to attract people. The problem is there are a lot of scammers out there, a lot of dating coaches who don't know what they're talking about. So you might even ruin your chances or ruin your relationships. You need to be very careful. Reinforcing your strengths and your gifts is going to be important as well. It can help if you use your second instinct as a crutch or as something that supplements you the energy you need. The second instinct can be a source of inspiration. It can be a source of salvation sometimes even, especially if you're the sexual instinct first. Throwing your energy, your life source energy into the second instinct can be a very good distraction. A lot of self-preservation second people who have the sexual instinct first get into fitness, health, preserving things. That can be a good distraction. It can also be a path towards self-transformation. And the sexual instinct is also about transformation, improving yourself. The sexual instinct is also about rising from the ashes, creating something new. And in an abstract sense, it's also about recreating yourself. So self-love is important, but not the arrogant kind, the kind that is reasonable. <laughs> you know, you cannot hate yourself. That is not going to work. But you can also not think you are the best thing in the world. There needs to be a balance. If your social instinct second, focusing on social matters, being more involved, can also propel you forward and make you more attractive. The thing is, the source of attraction oftentimes is your second instinct actually. So if you put all your energy in perfecting or increasing the second instinct, it is gonna dramatically increase your attractiveness in the eyes of other people. So for example, sexual instinct first and social instinct second people are not that good at self-preservation matters oftentimes. They can be, but often not. So. I wouldn't tell such a person, go to the gym and work out. Oftentimes those people don't really have the strength in that. So instead, I would tell them, use your social value, social capital, your social charisma, your social strength. And that often makes them find a partner. For SXSP, it is more common that they actually delve into the self-preservation instinct, delve into making themselves more physically attractive, like working out, or delve into things like finances and stuff like that, getting a stable career or job, those things can also dramatically increase your attractiveness. Obviously, if you're good at all instincts, that's gonna make you the most attractive person in the world, but that's a bit unrealistic, so we need to have priorities there. So yeah, there's no point in obsessing over relationships, it's actually better if you focus on the second instinct. Many people actually subvert the sexual instinct and focus on spirituality and God because that is also a very strong connection you can have. It is like being in a romantic relationship almost, but just without the physical aspects. So, so yeah, spirituality can actually also help you with feeling more secure with the sexual instinct when you're single, especially then that's important. If you are single, you really need to find anything that gives you strength because being single is very difficult for the section sync first. So yeah, that's basically it. So if you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you want to get typed by me, if you want to know which is your first or second or third instinct, then book a typing session with me. I would also like it if you joined the group. Like, share this video and subscribe. Okay, have a good day. Bye. You can see that with animals like the what is, the, what is the name? Like with that animal who has those very bright feathers. Uh, I don't know in, in English. Anyway, so that animal, you know, 